Hey, hey, hey there, Don Wilson here. First and foremost, thank you very much for your time. I know you're busy, so let's get right into it because we have a lot to cover today. Now, over the last 24 hours, my inbox, Facebook, everywhere people can find a way to contact me has been flooded with the same thing. Is there a replay? Is there a replay? I missed the call or even I was on the call and I want to go through the replay. And the reason there is not a replay is because the sensitive data that we had on the call and that also kept me from showing a lot of the stuff live on the call that I wanted to show. So even if you showed up to the call, make sure and watch this video and presentation all the way through because there's a lot of stuff that I wasn't able to show you and the reason why is because some of it was on Shopify, some of it had real orders in front of me where I couldn't go in and show some of the order stuff because it had customer data like an address that when I when somebody buys through a Shopify store, I have a po privacy policy on there just like you probably do that I have to adhere by as well and I couldn't show addresses of customers. So there's a, there's a lot of things I couldn't dig into live on the call that now that I can blur a screen, I can dig into. So make sure and watch this. this is going to be something really revolutionary. So let's get right into it. Here's what we're covering. 30,000 foot view that works, that hasn't changed since 2014 for PPC marketers. The growth struggles of the PPC marketer in today's marketplace that sell physical goods. Okay, there's some growth struggles. Design recycling is a cool technique I want to show you and I'll show you into some of my ads that we're using the same design over and over um, to make like 10 grand instead of just like one or two grand. Just by using this technique called design recycling. You may have seen part of it before, but you haven't seen it full blown in the way that I'm doing it unless you were on the call last night. Uh, the solution to the growth struggles, the marketplace that I've been building over the last year or so, the offer that I want to present to you today, how much it costs, all the details and that, and the bonuses that I have for that offer that I'm presenting to you today. So let's get right into it. The 30,000 foot view that you're gonna agree with because everybody on the call agreed with it as well. And this is how people start in this PPC marketplace, is you sign up on a crowdfunding platform and you start with Teespring, Gearbubble, Represent, Viral Style, something like that. You find some winners, learn the ropes, figure out that there's two main fail points there. One, targeting, two, design. Get some good designs, learn targeting. Once you do that, you get a few winners and you learn how to scale. You learn the budgeting techniques, learn the different types of posts where one's a PPE, one's a website conversion, and you kind of figure out a method to your own madness. There's a lot of different ways to scale out there. You get to find one that's comfortable for you, okay? You take your winners once you've got a system, and then you increase margins, move it to your Shopify store, start adding in other items where it's mugs, necklaces, start sourcing items from China and all kinds of different other places, and then you scale to more markets and build a team and you just do it over and over again. Now, everybody agrees that this is pretty much what you're supposed to do, and I totally agree with what you're supposed to do, and the reason we do this is profit. We want to build a brand. We want to get data. We want to have our leads. We want to maybe possibly sell the thing later because it's on our own domain and we own everything in it and all the customer data. All these different things are to bring in lots of profit and money and these are the reasons why we do it. Now here's the visual of that 30,000 foot view as you kind of grow. And it's mo money, mo problems. So if you're on Gearbubble or Teespring or a crowdfunding platform, you make $1 sign and you have pretty much no problems. They take care of customer service, take care of fulfillment, take care of lots of things for you, marketing and sometimes retargeting. All you really have to do is work on design and targeting, but they take a healthy, healthy profit margin for dealing with all the problems for you. So once you've got design and targeting down, the net, those were problems that you had to solve anyways. The next thing you wanna do is move up to Shopify or self-hosted or something like that and solve some more problems so you can make more money. Now, Gearbubble and Teespring don't just make you money by sitting on it. You had to solve problems. You didn't know targeting. You learned that. You didn't have good design. You found a way to do it, whether it was on Fiverr Design or something like else. There's problems along every single one. So you already are a problem solver if you've even sold 100 shirts. And by the call last night, I know a lot, most people that are watching this have sold at least 1,000. Okay? So you move your next step to Shopify. You get more items, more margins, more options. You can do more aggressive upsells. You can do follow-up sequences, all kinds of different things that you can do. You can click phone numbers inside of the shopping cart of a Shopify store and follow-up market by phone. I don't think I don't ever do that, but you can do that because of the options that you have. Now you do have to deal with a little bit more customer service. Some of the apps are monthly, but when you can make like three or four different three or four bucks more per shirt or per item or any of that stuff because you control so much more and you can go to different services, it's worth it, okay? I know people on Shopify that are absolutely destroying it because they can use tripwire funnels, they have so many more different options. There's a lot of things you can do on Shopify that you can't do on any other platform, period. That's why people move to it, okay? After you get good at solving some of the customer support problems and a few other things and you get some, some sales going on your Shopify store, then you go to white label solutions so you can start to scale. Like something like Scalopress or, or something similar to that. 
that you find along the way and you say, all right, I'm scaling these t-shirts. I need somebody that can brand it in the domain of my store so it's part of my brand. So you find a white label service. Usually what happens is if they have got really cheap pricing like Scale Press does, sometimes they have delay issues. Just keep it real. Sometimes they do. Sometimes there's a quality issue. Sometimes Gearbubble or Teespring has a quality issue too. But you don't see it 99% of the time because you don't handle customer service. Now you might see it if somebody posts something bad back to your page or something, then you hit us up. Hey, well, let's look what happened here. But if you're doing all the customer service, you see all the mix-ups along the way. So the white labels don't mess up as much as you think they would, but there is more problems. Okay, But with those problems comes no money. So like I said, you're already a problem solver from day one, learning targeting and these different skills that you had to learn. They're just more skills and more problems along the way to make you a lot more money. Then this is the most that you can make is when you're doing full-blown sourcing, fulfilling, and think of the credit card knife. It does like $400,000 to a million dollars a month now or something like that. They have to worry about delivery. They have to worry about scale. Those things cost like, this credit card knife costs like 20 cents, 10 cents when you get them in China, but then they have to worry about bulk order buys, logistics, warehousing, lots of different things. They make a boatload of money, but they have so many different problems. But this is kind of how it works. You start with somebody else solving all the problems, but they take a big giant chunk of the profit margin, like sometimes seven or eight dollars just for solving those problems. Then you move to Shopify, then you move to white labels, and then you move all the way to sourcing and fulfilling. You don't have to go as extreme as the credit card knife. Even just getting, you know, cast mold necklaces from China, drop ship so you can do a tripwire funnel of stuff on Shopify makes a ton of money. I know people that are doing a thousand, two thousand necklaces a day with that. Okay? So now that I've shown you the 30,000 foot viewpoint or 30,000 foot view that I know you agree with and you see, all right, if you want to deal with some more problems, which I'll help you with all those as you see what I'm going to present to you later today, um, you'll make a lot more money. Okay? If you look at what Scalable Press and a few other pricing places charge, it's drastic difference when you go to those. It's like four or five bucks sometimes. And if you sell a thousand or 10,000 shirts, you can do the math. All right, so design recycling, I'm going to show you how we took this design, which you can do on a t-shirt with direct-to-garment printing. You can't do it on Teespring or a few other platforms, but you can do it, um, and it looks absolutely stunning, beautiful. We've got this selling on mugs, necklaces, shirts, pretty much everything out there, and we're probably going to start doing it on stickers. I know a similar design like this sells inside of Walmart right now, so... I want to show you how we took this from campaign to campaign to item to item from different pieces of the funnel over and over. I'll give you a little bit of the results and um, of what we were doing from it too. So let's dig into some campaigns. I'll hop on over right here. All right, this is when we started running in June. It was $19.99. I don't think we have the actual number of sales showing on this campaign because we ran it evergreen. We don't want people copying it, even though now everybody sees it. But I think we made like 1200 bucks or something like that. It's a simple little campaign. It says, in a perfect world, get it here. Gearbubble.com slash perfect world. Nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Just to put the actual stuff that we put around this stuff for the most part in the actual app. All right, here's what it looks like. Nothing crazy, nothing fancy. So here's the actual ad when we started running it. And it's really simple to get that up there. If you have your bubble account, is all you got to do is upload that graphic onto a necklace. It'll pre-build that image for you, and you're set, ready to go. So what I did was I said, all right, I'm going to throw out just a softball ad. And we made like, I don't remember the exact amount. We made in sales, like two or three grand in sales. But we did make a good amount of money on this thing, okay? Get some water. Now, I want to show you inside this ad. It was nothing fancy, nothing crazy. I was actually traveling and screwed about half of it up. But we were going down to like... Five cents per result, four cents per result. I think we got down to two or three, but it's not showing in here. What we were doing with this was just simple. Women, 21 plus. All I did was just kind of throw it out there. I didn't optimize for mobile, non-mobile, uh, anything out there. I didn't dig deep on targeting. Here's my targeting. It was American Pitbull Terrors, Pitbulls, Pitbull Chat, Pitbulls, and Parolees. 21 to 65 plus female. I didn't break it down by interest. I didn't do everything perfect. I didn't set up all the conversion pixels. I didn't do all these fancy things, but I made a lot of money. So you don't have to be perfect. This is 7.5 million audience. What I was trying to do mainly was go pretty broad. So I know this audience work, this design works. We've sold it on shirts. We've sold it on necklaces. I've sold it on mugs. I've sold it on lots of different things. So I let this run for a little bit. And as you know, what we do is we get something to run until it stops working or we want to move to something different. And then maybe a few weeks later, we relaunch it. Because relaunches work. They don't make as much as the first one. That's just part of it. But it's refound money. If you've got a design that works, wait a little bit, relaunch it, reopen it, or whatever the item is. And it works. Again, we learned that Teespring, we've done it a bazillion times. So I actually took the same design. 
reopen it again. And what I like to do is I like to test. I like to test audiences. I like to test pricing. I like to test upsells. I like to test different items. I like to test everything in the funnel. And then I like to move it to my own domain. Okay, so I use places like Teespring, Gearbubble that do that solve all the problems to kind of get my data, do my testing, and this is what you're supposed to be doing. We've been talking about this for forever, but this is, you know, people do it now. So basically, I was like, all right, I'm going to go and throw it up again, real softball-like, but I'm going to drop the price down. I'm going to test upsells. I'm going to find what funnel is optimized. So I threw it up again, and I just said, women, 18 plus, U.S., Canada, Great Britain. And I'll tell you right now, Canada and Great Britain was a waste of money. But I can find that out by the breakdown. I can find that out by the country. So I got a country, uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.06. But I also looked at the orders. <laughs> they were coming from there, 0 0.04. So um, I, I, if I did it again, I wouldn't do Canada, United Kingdom. Uh, age and gender breakdown. So I can kind of see. And I didn't, you know, we, we didn't make much on this one. I'll show you everything about it. But I kind of figured out that if it's about, you know, 20, 21 to a little bit older, and I found it out that I was looking at the other breakdowns. It was on mobile. Those were the ones that were doing the best on PPE. Those were the ones when I was looking into my sales, who was actually coming in, what was actually selling. You can kind of tell that we're all females, not males, because um, I, I did both on the other one. So I've kind of dialed it in. All right, it's women. It's a certain age group, about 21 or so, and it's not international offer so well. U.S. traffic did great. Canada and Great Britain as well. They, they, they got about the same PPE, but looking at the sales, they just weren't coming in from there. And a lot of that could be because – Higher shipping costs. It couldn't. It maybe it's not the offer that it is. It could be, well, the price is part of the offer. But once you get outside of the U.S., shipping costs more. Okay, so that could be part of it. Like I said, if I had to do it over again, I'd just do U.S. And I had done it over again, and I'll show you different things. But we figured out uh, once you get to like 45, 64, it does start to drop off. 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So we kind of we figured out 18, 21-ish around there. And I know from other data. 18 to 20, a lot of them just don't buy, they engage. So I, I like to kind of dial it in. So I moved it on this one. We switched it. I'll show you the post. See post. And we moved it to $14.99. And we noticed no difference from $19.99 to $14.99. Um, and I've done that many times from other campaigns. And just don't sell your necklaces if you're doing them on Gearball, one of the places at $14.99. You're losing money. $19.99 converted exactly the same for all of our US based traffic as $14.99 did. So I'll show you this one. And you can see that we have an order in this now. Thank you. And we actually en engage back and forth to treat these people like real people, not just numbers. We got 88 sold at $14.95. That disappears upon Zoom. Now, like I said, we should have done $19.95. I know that now, but that's part of testing. Now, what we also tested instead of just the price to figure out which one converted the highest into margin for us, which was 1995, we stuck it and said, all right, what's the best thing to do with the necklace? Well, let's do the matching bracelet for an upsell. So we tossed the matching bracelet for an upsell on there for about half of those sales. One sale. One sale. <laughs> it was absolutely terrible. And I think some of that, to be honest with you, as to come with, this is a kind of detailed design. And while you can zoom on mobile very nice, very crisp, very easily, or I'm sorry, on desktop, on mobile, this isn't as easy to zoom and see. So that's part of the user experience. You got to put two fingers on the phone, move them apart, and really zoom in. You already know what the design says, but to really see how good it looks, it is harder to do on mobile. And that's just part of something being small and an intricate design. So that is part of it. So I split tested that, and then we said, all right, what about this design? on a mug for an upsell. So we tossed the mug on the upsell. We were making about $12 a sale. We sold seven of them on the upsell throughout, I think, 46 mugs, I believe. So I don't know that exact conversion rate in my head, but it's a lot better than one <laughs> at the bracelet and we make good margin. You know, we made seven, you know, 84 bucks that we would have missed if we didn't have an upsell at all. So that was able to make the campaign profitable. If we had the, the, the necklace continue to running at 1995, we'd have made even hundreds more. So we did okay. We made over a thousand the first one, reopened it, got some leads in. These people are all on the list, sold a couple different things, and did make some more money again. So we decided to flip flop it once again. Now we're going to flip flop it and move it to a new platform. And then it's going to get drop shipped out. And then we're also going to flip flop and put the mug on the front end of the funnel with. A necklace upsell and then they can have all kinds of different stuff in the store in the back end you can have single shirts you can have stickers magnets whatever you want okay so to do this we would just take this image which 
all we do to make that is you upload a print file just like on Teespring, Gearbubble, anywhere, and it makes the, the mug nice and easy for you. And then we put it up on a Shopify store. And I'm going to blur this stuff out, and I'm going to show, take you over to the page that we've got it running for on Shopify. All right, here it is, and this is a absolutely brand new store started within this week, actually, and it's already got, I think it's nearing in on $2,000 in sales just from on-demand items like uh, mugs and things like that. So it's very simple, very easy. It says this high-quality 11-ounce ceramic mug is a great way to express yourself. It's dishwasher, microwave safe. It's 100% printed, made, and shipped from the USA. Click Add to Cart to add it to your cart. You click that, it can upsell you into an actual necklace. And the necklace, I believe, is set at $19.95. I don't know the exact upsell uptake rate that we have on this, but the upsell on the Shopify store is actually more aggressive than the upsell on Gearbubble.com. The reason why is because Shopify can allow you to do it more aggressive on your own domain. If an uh, upsell is aggressive, it doesn't affect Shopify overall. There's a reason why Teespring's upsells are in beta, and there's a reason why our upsells are not one click. We have to reconfirm that they are sure that they want this added to their order. And the reason why we do that is because we don't want chargebacks because we eat all the money on the chargebacks and the refunds and disputes and all these different things that on Shopify you have to control all that yourself. So you're not going to see aggressive upsells on Gearbubble or any platform that wants to stay around for a very long time. But you can do it through Shopify as long as you can have good customer support with these people and if your upsell gets too aggressive, you can adjust it or you can only do it on certain products. But on a crowdfunding platform like Gearbubble, allowing any seller to use an aggressive upsell any way they want is just spelling trouble. You have the ability to be responsible with your technology and not misrepresent it. So we put it at $9.95, dropped our margins down on this, and it's converting very well on the front end because we've just sent a little bit of traffic. And then, like I said, the necklace upsell is $19.95. Now, I'll show you in this store. We just started this, and I'll blur it out, a lot of this stuff. We just started this store a few days ago. So sales by month, and it's at $2,032.10. Now, this is pretty much all ran by this one advertisement that's selling all those mugs and selling some necklaces in the back end, giving us leads and all kinds of different things. We'll go through, I'll show it to you. We spent 606.46. I think we spent like 45 bucks more on a tester. And look what it is. 22 plus women, US mobile. How did I find that data so that I could dial this thing in so that we could make it convert and even selling it for less at a better profit? Because we've spent, I think, about the same we spent on that 14.95 necklace We've got $2,000 in sales on a Shopify platform with cart abandonment going, retargeting now going, many more sales that are going to be going. It's going to make us even more money over there by quite a bit. We can do a lot more with the leads and data. So it wasn't the targeting that was anything fancy. It was the same that you saw before. It's actually a slight less. We put in pit bulls, this, this, and this, and we got it to 2.8 million. So we dialed in the targeting a little bit cleaner, and we used the audiences that we were able to find by – Going into the other ad. So we got agent dinner breakdown, go through, see it, four cents, four cents, four cents, four cents, four cents. We've dialed this in to be our right metric. Okay, and I went to 22 plus. Then the reason why, as I, I didn't exclude these females like I did on the necklace, is because it's a mug. Think about it, probably uh, when you were 12, you probably weren't drinking that much coffee. But if you look at someone who's a little bit older, they're more apt to drink coffee. So on a necklace, since we kind of exclude people that are usually 55 and above. That's just what's been working for us. But when you do a mug, sometimes the older audiences are going to work a little bit better because they're more apt to be drinking coffee and having that as something that they want to use. Uh, so basically the mug, we're just doing simple targeting. And right now it's at $200 per day. We've already went over 100 sales in the store, over $2,000 in revenue. Got a lot of card abandonment recovers and a lot of different things that are going in. Okay, I can't show you all the stuff in the store because it's not mine, but I can show you what I'm running traffic for. And I'll show you how we fulfill each and every single one of these items. And it works the same if it's a shirt, mug, or any of that. So I'm going to show you that stuff, and it's actually going to show you into the platform as well that I wanted to present to you today. So first, let me take you back on that shop if I want, and I have to blur some of this stuff out. We'll go to orders. I'm going to refresh it. We got one 21 minutes ago. Uh, 1015, 816. See, as you can see, we've got a bunch fulfilled, and these are the ones we've already fulfilled. And um, then we've got some new ones that are unfulfilled. And I'm going to blur out these people's information, which is what I couldn't do live on the call before. And I can show you how we're going to fulfill those. Basically, if you went through and looked and saw, all right, these are all the ones that are 
Pitbull mug or whatever it is that are all the same design, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't matter, okay? You go into those, you click all those out, say there was 150 of them then. You click export, selected, three orders that are all in that campaign, and you click export orders. Boom, three orders exported. Then you're gonna go into this CSV and you're gonna take it over to the Gearbubble Dropship Program, which I'm gonna show you in just a moment. But let me give you a quick glance into the order export so you can see what's what's in it. It's just basically got your, your order information. The It doesn't format it right with Shopify because they're weird like that, don't know why. But the order ID is the first, first column and there's the email. And then I, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna blur it, most of the stuff out. And then all the way down to the right, there's gonna be shipping address and all these different things that I can't really show you because it's all customer data. But that's what happens is whenever you wanna fulfill an item, whether it's a mug, shirt, necklace, something from China, this is how you're gonna to have to do it. You're gonna to have to export the information and give it to whatever provider is making it for it unless you're shipping it yourself. Then you're just gonna print this on a label. So order export, say you're fulfilling for three of these mugs or a hundred of these mugs, doesn't really matter. All you do is basically Export your CSV, and then you're going to take it over to Gearbubble. And I'm going to show you what you do with it here. You click Order, and there's a bunch of demos that I've got in here for you. Click New Order, and then what you're going to do is look for the SKU number chart. See if you have a mug, a shirt, or any of that. Now, I'm going to show you into this whole Gearbubble dropship program, so bear with me. There's a lot to demonstrate, but... I think the best way to show it to you and explain it, because it's a big beast, is show you how we would do an order from in and out, okay? So we view this SKU number chart. We can do necklaces, bracelets, uh, square, circle, heart, unisex tee, women's tee, hoodie, um, tank top, UT hoodie, nine and 11 ounce mug. Eventually we'll have stickers and hats and all these different things in here. But where we're at right now at this order is an 11 ounce mug that's on the shop by store. So we got 11 ounce white mug. All right, so what I would do, and I'll, I'll show you, we've actually got another CSV, is you download the example CSV and format it the way that we want it formatted. And it's just a very quick process. Now, if you've got like 6,000 orders, reforming it, matting a CSV, you might want to hire somebody to do that. But if you've got 6,000 orders coming in, you're probably doing okay. So you would choose the file after it is, here, and I'll show you a quick glance at this so you can just see it. And I'll, like I said, I'll blur out the customer information, but you'll have order number, SKU number, quantity, size, color, first name, last name, address, address two. It's all this stuff that's exactly in your Shopify CSV. So really all you got to do mainly for your Shopify CSV to make it work is just delete the extra columns of data they have. It's very quick. And then you can import it over to us. So this is a string of orders. You click open. You choose whatever campaign that you are selling on your Shopify store from Gearbubble. And the beauty is that is you want to use Gearbubble to create these beautiful images for you to sell on your Shopify store, whether it's a shirt, mug, bracelet, necklace. If we're fulfilling it for you through our, our, our program, you have no problem with you using our mock-ups that we spent a massive amount of money making sure they're right. And we split tested these mug ones. These work the best, period. All right, so you click that, and if you want to do screen printing and different things, we have the ability to upload EPSs and different files, but we'll get into that in a minute. But basically, what you want to do now is click Get Quote. All right, and as you can see here, what it will do is load an entire order summary. It'll just basically check everything that you sent in the CSV, and it will let you see if it's correct. Okay, so it'll read it and say, what's the size, what's the color, and what's the price, and what's the quantity inside of that one. Now, as I scroll down through this, you'll be met at the very bottom with the order summary and you'll see fees. Just ignore the fees because as you'll see later today, those fees aren't something that you're going to pay with what they look like. You'll get better fees. So I'll show you this. This is just what an order import would be. Uh, mugs do have a little bit higher shipping, so don't let that shipping amount alarm you. They're ceramic. They come in a box, all kinds of different things. If you give cheap shipping on mugs, odds are the mugs are going to break when you send them. So this is basically all the orders that we have for that Pitbull mug that I put inside of a CSV, so you'll get them all blurred out. And I would click proceed, and then boom. 77 of that actual individual mug, or their uh, orders and ships, so you'll be able to see that they're um, 59 uh, orders, so a couple people got two, okay, or they bought uh, two of the mugs per address. So then you'll be able to go see details, 
each and every single individual one. If there's a problem with an order, you can click send message and it will send it over to the provider and say, hey, this person um, wants to cancel their order. If it's a shirt, hey, this person wants to get it in a large or a double XL or any of these different things. Everything is centralized in one spot. Once the provider that you have set up for that item makes your item and they ship it back, this tracking number will actually automatically update. It'll say from status, it'll go from not shipped to processing to done uh, and the, or to shipping and done. Okay, once it's in shipping and done status, you'll have a tracking number in there that we could copy and paste back into Shopify. We've got integrations coming and all that different stuff. So you actually don't have to do anything. Once you import it in here, the provider does all the providing. They push all the different stuff back. The tracking number comes and updates. So if you want to manually update your tracking number to your Shopify store, it's as simple as clicking here, copy, and pasting it. Okay. Once we get our full-blown integration approved with Shopify, you only have to do that. You can click import your orders, and then once that happens and it's done printed in the tracking number, it'll automatically go all the way back to your Shopify store and update your customers. So hopefully you can kind of see the power. If you want to click to see what send message looks like, they'll have a print file, the order ID, then you can send over the message that says, hey, this person needs to change to a large or whatever it is, and it sends over to Gearbubble, the provider of that dropship mug, and we can actually still provide all this stuff. And the difference with this is that it won't show up as gearbubble.com in the top left corner. It'll show up as whatever your Shopify store name is that you set up in your settings right here. So I'm gonna blur my stuff out of here, but it'll be company name would be myshopifystore.com. Full name is your name, the address of your store, city, state, zip, country, EIN of a business that you've got set up for that Shopify store. The reason we have you set the stuff up in here is so that no matter who your provider is, from no matter what item it is, because we've got different providers for different items. We've got Teespring, Scale, Press, all kinds of different people for t-shirts. We've built the technology in for each and every single provider to be able to print this return address label for you at the ground level. Whether we're doing necklaces, mugs, a drop ship from an oddball weird item in a warehouse, all the technology is built in here. So hopefully you're kind of starting to see it a little bit and I'll show you both dashboards. Here's the order import that we've got. You see all the tracking details. And then what will happen as a provider and I'll just say that I've set it up actually for the demonstration that I'm the provider of this actual item that was just imported. So I'll go through in here and I'll see 77 imported here, 59 need to be shipped out, click see details. And then each and every single one of those ones that were just imported on the orders dashboard, now for a provider standpoint, is all inside of here. And they can send the messages back and forth to you. You guys can communicate with each other no matter what provider we have set up for any item, no matter how you're doing it. So all they have to do is say, all right, we're going to do this. We're going to make this one for you here for customer name at this address. And then when we print the label, whatever you've got set up for your return address is what's going to print on that label. So it's a full dropship for whatever that you're needing, whatever store you've got out there. So basically say Joe Blow goes and makes this mug or Gearbubble makes this mug and it looks beautiful and then we package it up and we print the label and put the tracking number up and ship it out and then we update the tracking number inside of here. What we've done is we've automated all that for providers as well. So you can kind of see both sides of this. If they wanted to update a tracking number for this order, they could put tracking number, DHL, USPS, and then that's going to update over to you. You can update your Shopify store or not update your Shopify store. I, I, I like to give tracking numbers out. Some people don't. And then it's done. All the fulfillment happens. It'll have your actual Shopify store printed on the label just like it came directly from you. Now what's really cool is we've got full-blown integrations for providers. So if you click print label, Depending on what they've got set up, and I've got the wrong weight on this package, so these amounts are wrong. Depending on what they have set up for this actual SKU, when they click this, it will hook into stamps, and we've got other integrations coming. It'll pull from their actual account. So Scalable Press can pull from their account, Gearbubble can pull from theirs, T Screen can pull from theirs. It will take this return address and all this stuff just by clicking the whatever you want in here when you click print. It will register with stamps.com. It will, it will actually push the return address via their API. It will push the customer address via the API over, and then that will actually get printed for the label. So everything that a provider needs, even if you wanted, even if a provider wanted to start their own drop shipping service with no technology, everything for the provider dashboard is completely coded in here for complete scale and automation. That's why we're able to get all these different providers under one hood, which you're going to see the whole marketplace here in a, in a minute, so just bear with me. 
but it's because we, we've, we've integrated with everything on both sides. So there's a message center, there's settings, there's statistics, integrations. You'll see there's stamps.com. This is connected. DHL is coming soon. Bulk import, so you can bulk import the order IDs and the tracking numbers for us. A provider can bulk import all those when they do that whole order for you all at once and then boom all those send back to you and then this side of the that would show ship 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 tracking number tracking number tracking number and all you got to do is push that back to your customers and as as we build in the integrations for different things on both the order side and the provider side we'll be able to fetch all your orders from Shopify you'll be able to click import them and then once a tracking number gets updated you won't even have to update it back to your Shopify customers and this takes like a month or two to get approved with Shopify, but we've got it working. All it's going to do is, once you import it, you don't have to do nothing. It will get it fulfilled for you. It will drop ship it for you. It will have your return address in there. It will have your customer's address in there. It will push the tracking number back to your dashboard so you have records, data, information, and it will also push it all the way back to your Shopify account so you can up, it will update your customers with tracking numbers for you. You don't have to do anything. Now, it's already working at the bulk import level and the manual level. But we are, like I said, building the whole thing out at a dashboard level with a full-blown provider marketplace with full-blown in-and-out integrations on both sides. Okay, so we, and you can actually use you can drop ship anything. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. But here's what the provider marketplace looks like just for T-shirts. This is what a lot of people sell a lot of clearly T-shirts. And let me get a sip of water while you look at this. Look at this whole screen and the data. In it. Gearbubble LLC, I think it's got an overall score of 9, quality score 8.9. Turnaround time, average 7 days because our, our necklaces take a little bit longer because they're handmade. And our, our mugs are like, wow, like 24, 48 hours real fast. Uh, years in business, one pretty new. History score is 10, and I believe that's a lot of that's what value I've brought to the marketplace is a history that I've got a good relationship, and you guys know I'll do you right. Dropship level, full dropship, pricing score, nine, set as provider, yes. Of course I'm going to set my own company as provider. Teespring, I even give them a higher overall score because they've been around so long and done so well. Their quality score is 10. Average turnaround time after a campaign ends is 72 hours. They've been in business like three or four years. Their history score to me is 10. We've created so many millionaires together, it's not even funny. Now their dropship level, I'll probably change this to full dropship. Right now, it's set up at least at a fulfillment level. So when we send them over CSVs, it will fulfill all your orders out, and it will send out an email notification that says this order is being fulfilled by Teespring for Shopify, yada, yada, boom. So you'll still get fulfillment, and it's still it, you'll have not you'll have customers getting all their stuff, but they won't be confused if it has a different return address. So they've got a, a good solution for that. But if they use my my uh, dashboard, which I think they're going to be doing, it'll have full blown drop ship, and it'll be very easy. So that's probably going to be full blown drop ship. But at the end of the day, you have full fulfillment for them. That's just as good as if you did it with full blown drop ship. Now their pricing score, I gave them an 8.0 because they have the highest pricing out of the people in our marketplace. They have that for a reason. They have the best brand name. They have the best deliverability. They're proven. They have the best customer service because they've got so many people hired and trained over the last three years of dealing with the volume we've already sent them. So I still think that deliverability, long-term longevity of a brand and all these things are very important. So I give them the highest overall score based on their turnaround time, their quality score, and their history score. Even higher score than I give them my own company. How's that for honesty? All right, T-Launch. I believe these are the best directed garment providers in the marketplace right now. It's owned by Christopher Hamza. Overall score, I'm giving a 9. Quality score, I'm giving a 9.5. Teespring and T-Launch, both if they do direct to garment, Teespring doesn't do it on their own platform, but we'll talk about that in a bit, how they do do it. Um, they're, they're both using core needs. Uh, Teespring's bought the most expensive core neat printers there are because they got both loads of money. They made a lot of money, they got a lot of fun, and they can afford the best printing known to man. T-Launch also has the best printing known to man with the Cornets. I can't tell you how they got them, but they've got top of the line printing. They've actually got some really fast turnaround times. I think their turnaround time is actually 48 hours now. It's the fastest in the marketplace in my experience with what we've done with the guy. Quality score 9.5. I can't give them a 10 because I've only got so many shirts from them. I've got like 30 Teespring shirts laying around my closet. I can, I can confidently give a 10.0 quality score because I've bought from them for so long. Turnaround time, like I said, T-Launched uh, about 48 hours, to be honest with you. I need to update that. Years in business, two, I think. I think you may have been around longer. I'm not sure. Chris has been in the printing industry for a while. History score, then their lack of history with the marketplace, I give a 7.0. Dropship level, full dropship. Good guy. Uh, pricing score, 9.2. They got great pricing on their directed garments. Like I said, I think they're the best overall option for directed garment printing, which is like that actual 
Pitbull one I showed you, be will look beautiful if T-Launch prints it, okay? Because they're really good at directed garment, full color items, and it's a flat fee. And we'll get to the fees and the pricing and all that stuff here in a bit. Let me get a sip of water. Scalable press, I give an overall score of 7.1. That's a, 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 a generous score. <laughs> Quality score, 6.8. And, you know, most of their items they have honestly go out just fine. They're usually the quality score is the delay, and a lot of their quality score, it's not from the quality of print. Most of their prints are pretty good. I've had some issues with them here and there. Just, you know, I've had some issues with everybody here and there. But the quality score, I think, is because what it does damaging to the brand if they have too big of a turnaround time. They're improving it every single day. I could probably give them a little bit better score on turnaround time now. Um, but the quality, like if, if you promise people on your shop by store items within a certain amount of time and they can't deliver it within a certain amount of time that devalues your brand so the quality of the service not just the print is what I'm factoring into this quality score years in business uh, I think scalable press by that name is four years depends if you count shirts.io or whatever other Joe Blow name they've went by I think they've been around for a long time a lot, lot longer than that history score <coughs> excuse me Judging by looking at some of the T-chip threads, some of the scalable press threads, history of other companies they have going names by, I give them a two. Um, they don't have a very good history. That's just the facts of what I've reviewed. Uh, dropship level, full dropship. Pricing score, 9.8. They have the best pricing in the industry. Hands down, without a doubt, nobody else is even close. But they've got the lowest history store. So you can probably see there's a link there. Uh, so when they're doing good, they're an amazing, beautiful, marginal provider. But if you have the data, but when they start slipping up, which we can give you, which is part of this marketplace, then you know when to switch from them. And then when you go, all right, yes, let's get this marginal provider. Oh, they're kind of screwing up and getting behind. Well, uh, I'll just go with Gearbubble, Teespring, or one of these other ones until they get their stuff back together. And then it looks like their delivery times have improved again. All right, we'll switch back since their delivery and quality times are improved and we can make like three or five, three or five, sorry for the cursing, three or $4 more per sale. So... I should, the data is something that we're, we kind of get by reviews and just the data that we get inside internally in the marketplace. Now, you saw we can message back and forth. Messages don't always mean problems. But if there's a spike in sales, that moves a provider from a green to a yellow. You'll see a provider status in here depending on what providers you have later. It'll be green, yellow, orange, or red. Green means all good. Don't worry about it. Fire away. Yellow means spike in sales for that provider throughout the marketplace. Orange means that there has been a spike in messages, sales, and disputes. So what happens is a message, if you message back and forth three times, and then for some reason, um, that could just be that there's a couple different things you guys need to talk about about an order. It could, may not be a bad thing. After three times, you'll get the ability to raise it into a dispute, kind of like PayPal, and we, all, we will track how many people get different disputes. And if there's an increase in disputes, then we start to get worried. Like, why is there an increase in disputes? Usually it's a delay, print quality mess up, these type of things. When we get the data as a marketplace, give us the ability to tell when our provider is behind. So if scale presses on yellow or orange status, maybe don't send them orders. And then if they get to red, it says their disputes have spiked for too long. And if they stay on red status for more than 72 hours, we stop taking orders for them until they can get back to orange or yellow. So it's a full-blown self-regulating marketplace with reviews. We plan on putting mystery shoppers in it. Dropship users will be able to use reviews, and we'll go randomly collect customer reviews. So if a dropship user wants to do something unsavory and give bad reviews for somebody, it self-regulates itself. And as more people use the platform and more sales go through it, you'll get more data. So you don't have to rely on scalable press saying, oh, yeah, we're cool, we're good, when really they're behind. Okay, So you, you'll have the empirical data that you need to select the provider that's best for you. So hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you got to see kind of what's going on inside this import. Um, import this dashboard. It'll go over to the provider dashboard over there. Uh, it's it's really nice. Okay, it's really simple. You just import your CSV that's reformatted from Shopify. Bring it over here. Select your provider for your T-shirts in the provider marketplace. And if you import an order that's got these SKU numbers, seven through. 14, all the common ones, common sizes, common colors that you need to run a t-shirt business. All you got to do is, is, is switch inside the provider marketplace from scalable press to Teespring or whatever. And we have databases with the pricing in the background that you can't see inside of here that it will go fetch for your actual order quote. 
So depending on what you've got here for the provider, that's what kind of pricing that you're going to get. So that's what we're going to do is I'm going to show you into the pricing. Hopefully I was able to demonstrate the marketplace at a very good level for what it has all this on-demand stuff for. Now I want to go back into the pricing so you can see the, the pricing scores for each individual person that's in this marketplace right now. The marketplace will grow to more providers. Other people will see the presentation and be like, man, I want to be a part of that. And I'll be like, cool, let's vet you. Let's do some samples. Let's do this, this, and this, and, and then we'll put them in there. So let me get a sip of water and we'll go back to the slides. All right, we just dug into some campaigns and, and the marketplace and all kinds of cool stuff. So here's shirt pricing. Unisex T, gearbubble.com. Normal direct-to-garment fee on gearbubble.com is $9.95 plus $4.95 shipping and handling. We do we give a very great public price, but we're not even a public platform right now. So normal DC is kind of hard to even say relevantly for us, but we don't make hardly anything on our DTG for that. We make more money on our necklaces and our mugs. I'm just keeping it real. Uh, we make a, a decent margin on those because we get pretty close to the production floor on, mu on, on mugs and we, hand, we own the production floor on necklaces and bracelets so we can make more there. So our DTG pricing is great. We can't drop it much for drop ship. Um, it's like 70 cents di different. And that's because we've uh, just we don't make much on the platform on those. We can drop more on mugs and other things, which we'll we'll, we'll show to you here in a bit. Uh, T launch normal direct to garment price better than Gear Bubbles. Okay, there's a reason they had a better pricing score than us. Eight fifty to nine fifty. Eight fifty is their normal price. I think nine fifty is what they're going to be maybe moving it up to. Our direct to garment fee from them is eight dollars, and then three dollars shipping and handling. The cool thing is. Um, we do have a little bit of fee, so it equals out to almost about the same amount, maybe a few cents less. But what we can do is we can help you with the disputes. We can help you with the messages back and forth, the communication. And there's unique order IDs. So if you really have a problem or something with, your, with one of your actual customers having an issue, you can send them to Gearbubble Live Chat. And with, and the, with just their name, they can look up the actual order and say, hey, this is over. The T-shirt the is uh, it's, it's on its way. Here's the tracking number. Boom. So we can actually help you as part of this marketplace with some of the customer service as well because we can go in in the back end and see, oh, okay, that order is behind or, oh, okay, that order is actually shipped by USPS. Here's the tracking number, which who knows what that's worth. But we can we, we were able to help with all these providers when if you only had the access to one or there was no centralized way for this data to be had, we couldn't help. So this is the pricing for T-Launch, great pricing, the best provider, I think, for direct-to-garment in the industry right now, but there's no screen pricing for either one of us. So scalable press, uh, 1143 out the door. Gildan toilet paper. This is that crappy ass unisex, feels like cardboard piece of crap, and that's what all their website quotes are based off of. It goes up quite a bit more when you go to Hanes. Those Gildan ones, you will never find them ever anywhere in a retail store. Never gonna happen it's because they don't even sell them like that. The only places that they sell them to is these crap wholesale markets like this. Nobody will be happy when they get a piece of cardboard in the mail. So we will not even bring that one that they give you the public quotes onto the marketplace and the one that they went through T chip and a bunch of stuff. It's not good for your brand. Okay, so we get you a quality garment and we shove our weight around as a marketplace for cheaper out the door than they give you that gilded piece of crap. We get you a Hanes direct to garment fee. No matter how many colors. That's what you're going to pay. No matter how many units, if you do a full color, that's what you're going to pay. So screen, so you can get an idea. One side, a uh, single side of one color design on like a black shirt at 200 units sold is $3.75 per shirt. And that's a Hanes, not a Gildan. Uh, the, the Gildan makes an okay hoodie, but they make a terrible unisex. Hanes, unisex, small through extra large. Every platform out there is going to charge you more once you go to 2XL and more because there's more fabric in there. They get charged more from the actual provider. So just so you know, if you print on the back of a shirt because it's more printing process, uh, for the marketplace it's like a $4 fee and then it's $2 per item more on 2XL, 3XL and it's standard like that on pretty much every single platform. Just so you know, shirt pricing for source gear, this is a private provider I have. It's just like T-Launch, okay? They just use a different type of printing and they're a different warehouse. So you can get really great, crisp T-Launch type pricing through Source Gear. Another guy that I've actually taught him how to sell his first T-shirt, Christopher, runs this actual warehouse, great direct-to-garment pr uh, printing, and they have like a 48-hour turnaround. Direct-to-garment can be pretty quick. Now, Teespring, they don't do fulfillment at a dropship level publicly for anyone. Okay, I've done, I'm, the, I'm probably the biggest influencer in the Teespring history. I actually know I am. Um, so I can get them to do things that they couldn't do. Originally, their direct to garment pricing, I got the, their actual fulfillment department to wiggle it down in general, and I think that they're actually going to do it at this pricing. Um, I can match the fulfillment pricing that they plan on doing publicly later, which is 1050 
um, on the direct to garment plus three ninety nine shipping and handling. Okay, I know that, that right now you can't get that unless you're a power seller. Okay, the good thing about Teespring is they have very quick turnaround time. They have a beautiful history. You know, with thousand percent confidence that if you can send them their orders, they'll get it done right. Because that's why so that's why most people sell on Teespring right now, anyways. Their history, their brand. They were bringing that type of thing to the fulfillment level. There is other stuff that's cheaper, but you can one-click switch for whatever works best for you. And you can tell when Scale Press and other places are behind. So here's an idea of what you get on screen with them. And I can't give you all the pricing because they vary from units to colors to front and back to all these different things. But single-sided, one-color design at 200 units sold is 730. All right, and that's a Hanes unisex um, small through extra large. Same bumps in pricing on the double XL and double sided. So here's some numbers and info. Most people sell tees on Teespring. I'll show you that pricing one more time. It's kind of hard to take it in. There's so many people all at once. So here's the number and info. Most people still sell tees on Teespring. They're great, period. But you can't do full color printing. You can do it on Gearbubble. Okay. Low pricing on a low volume is fucking bad. Okay, you put you just go in their designer right and not right now, because watch my presentation. Go in their design any time. Put a black unisex hands up with one color. The lowest goal they got there is goal of five. You're gonna start with a base cost of $15.25 before shipping. That's retarded high because it's it's their their model on the, the main website is based only on screen. They're a great option for if you're doing volume. But we all know that some campaigns get like one, two, or three sales. And those are already you can't do anything about those on, on Teespring. And there's campaigns that get five or ten sales. And if you do Shopify and you sell a mug and then they go add a shirt to the cart with it, well, they don't want to wait seven days for a campaign to close for you to get your margin. But you don't want to get screwed and have to pay fifteen twenty-five. So what do you do? You use the best of both worlds. Okay, on the fulfillment side, scale of press, great margins, but they've priced themselves into a growth problem. Many times we've seen it. That's why their history sucks. When they're doing great, and now you can know when they're doing great, you can make thousands and thousands and thousands of extra dollars on a single order or just a, a, a orders that you do throughout the year because they're literally half the price of others. But not one provider is a perfect solution for a marketer. We have people on Gearbubble killing it right now that are doing full color designs that you can't do on screen. Screen has a limit of like six to ten colors. So we've got people killing it. Like that Pitbull design kills it, but you can, literally cannot print it on screen. You can't do it on Teespring. But, you know, use Teespring. Use Gearbubble for testing, okay? Use it for what we're good for, okay? Use the Teespring fulfillment for what it's best for, making sure that it's your last redundancy that you need or, you know, the only redundancy that you need. You don't need other ones, but you're going to pay more for it. When Scale Press isn't behind, they're doing great. Use those. Get great margins. If you've got a PPC campaign that won't work on Teespring margins but will work on Scale Press margins, you've got the ability to switch those things around, okay? So you need all these different options. We've just got them all for you in one place. If you've got a campaign that ends with 10, great, DTG. Send them out. Send them out quick. You got a shopping cart order that's got a shirt in it, just a single shirt. That's going to increase your average cart order and make you a lot more money. But waiting around for screen print is just not going to work for that solution. So you need to be able to do that. Now you can get everything all in one spot. Now that's just shirt pricing. We can always match the pricing where you're going to get, a, get it somewhere else or beat it. Period on pretty much everything out there, and then we can help with customer service, we can help with centralization, and we give you redundancies. Redundancies don't exist anywhere else unless you're in the back end of a crowdfunding platform. I can one-click switch from Scale Press to the Printful to Teespring or to these different actual places. That's the intellectual property that allows Gearbubble to take all these sellers in. We're basically just giving that straight to the seller now. So now you have the same level of redundancy technology as these big giant platforms do. But now I'm also gonna give you necklaces, Mugs, everything that was in those SKU numbers, you can actually set up private stuff with an actual dropship warehouse. And we have one that you will get automatically approved with if you join our marketplace to where if like SKU 101 is a thin blue nine bracelet, wristband, and then you import SKU 101 with a quantity of one and you have a private provider set up, which we can do for you in, at the support desk. When you import that order, that person can just pack and ship and it will print their label with your return address on there and they can send out thin blue lines with your Shopify store name on it. All that integration technology is built into it and you actually get access to our dropshipping platform. So what all do you get with this package? The dropship program founder, founder account. 
You get access to that order dashboard. You get access to, to all of our automation integrations for Shopify, Amazon dropshipping, WooCommerce, Magento. We're probably going to do Etsy as well. All our fulfillment integrations to all those different platforms. It's not easy to integrate to a lot of those APIs. Okay, ScalablePress is a very well-documented API. Some of those don't even have APIs. We have to custom code. Some of those integrations just aren't possible. We're going to get all the ones that we've got custom, present, and future for automation, fulfillment, access to all the items that we've got present and future, full gear bubble on-demand access and, and, the, and access to the beta group. Now, a lot of people bought in to get access to Gearbubble as a beta user for $2.97 when they bought Chris Records Dark Post Profits for me as an affiliate promotion several months ago. And Gearbubble on demand access is still not open to the public. Now, I can't give anybody discounts on this marketplace because it's a totally separate offer, but we always take care of our beta people. And since this is part of the offer, we will actually, once you get into our marketplace, join the dropship program that we're presenting to you today, just send our support email or your receipt from that promotion where you bought the dark post profits within 30 days we'll credit your account 297 so you can sell 297 dollars with mugs necklaces whatever on us i had to split that affiliate commission with three people that promoted with me i had to give half of it to chris record so i'm losing probably like 200 bucks but i just want to show you guys you know we take care of founding members we take care of beta members i can't give you a discount on the program but i will give you credits which everybody on the call last night said it was absolutely Stunning amazing because most people would just wouldn't do anything. And I know I would still get people buying and happily buying if I didn't. But it just goes to show you we take care of our people. So you're still also going to get access to our API way later, but you do get it. Auto-approved and setup fee waived for our dropship program and warehouse. Now, we also have a dropship marketplace, just like the T-shirt uh, provider marketplace. To where if Gearbubble, we've got a warehouse in Malvin, Kansas, that we're staffing up and putting more people in that we've got SKUs in already, that you're going to get a setup fee waived. So if you want to do whatever wristbands from China and ship them straight to our warehouse, and then we'll house them for you and ship them out as you sell them, we do all that. And we waive your setup fee, which would probably be like a thousand bucks just to set your stuff up in our warehouse. That's all waived as part of this. Okay, so you get access to the dropship marketplace. We've got other people on board. We've got three different other warehouses on board. So if Gearbubble Warehouse gets behind, we'll say, hey, here's our Rolodex of dropship warehouses. You can set your SKUs up with them as well. So you'll have the one that's on the West Coast in California. We've got deals on the one that's on the East Coast in Florida, and then we have a centralized one in Kansas that we own all of. Then you get three weeks. Live training with me. I'll show you these shop by store that we do. I'll show you how we destroy it with mugs and all these different other items. Last time I taught a training course, it was responsible for millions and millions of units and results. So I'm going to get on there every single week for you. We'll start with orientation and then we'll go into how I do broad formula stuff with all these different items and then we'll go into sourcing and a few other different things. Okay? So here's what it will cost when it goes public. All right? $9.97 a month. And that gives you basically what we would call the equivalent of $100,000 uh, 100, orders per month account, where it's $9.97 a month, $0.33 cent per order fee, and a 3.9% transactional fee. Or what most people would think would buy would be $9.97 a year, you're paying $0.50 cents an order, and 4.4% transactional fee. Now let me tell you where those fees go, because I know it's a different model than what you used to pay, and you just want a one-off price. We would not be around a year later supporting you with a one-off price, period. Because we already have a half a million dollars in development, we help you with the support, we help messaging back and forth, and we have two different transactional fees that we have to pay ourselves. When The merchants take money. You're not going to transact and do business without a bank making something. Credit card companies don't run for free. Okay, So when you pay us for that quote that you get and you submit it into your order dashboard, whether it's mugs, shirts, doesn't matter, we're going to have to pay – 2.9% fee at least, depending on the merchant. If one shuts us down, we have to go up to 3.2 or so fee just to take that order. Okay, And then we have to pay the invoice from the provider, and we have to pay a fee again on the other side. So basically that banks, fraud, both-way merchant fees, disputes with chargeback, I think we lose money on the 3.9%, and we basically break even on the other. So the fees get ate up mainly by the banks. I'm not trying to screw you. I'm not trying to charge you extra. I want to clearly explain why we have to charge those so that we can stay around and provide great support and help you for a very long time. Other platforms, you know, you're, you're paying three, four, five, eight bucks sometimes, 10 if it's a hoodie, in marginal fees for them to do the fulfillment for you. Here, you only got to pay this amount. Now, you won't pay that much because you're on my list. Internal, founder. Here's what it will cost founders. You'll get a $9.97 a month account 
for what it costs for the 997 a year account. Go here. MastermindMarketingLLC.com slash founders. Okay, let me explain this one more time here. You will get what would normally cost $12,000 a year. And if you're selling hundreds, if not thousands, and I know from the call last night, people are selling at least thousands of shirts. Or they know plenty of people that are. Okay, Those fees add up drastically. This is the cheapest price that you will ever get, and you get access to the redundancies to all these different providers. You get cheaper pricing on most every single shirt from every single provider or at least match, and you get one-click redundancy, so you can go to the provider that costs half as much. All right, You sell 300 shirts, and you know when you can use Scalable and when not to use Scalable, that makes you the 1000 bucks. You sell 300 shirts ever. Now, I know most people will sell more than that ever. They sell thousands and thousands, so that's... Thousands and thousands of extra, 3,000, 4,000, 10,000 that they're missing out on. And all the campaigns that you had to shut off before because you were about breaking even, think of how many more you could have ran if you could have doubled your profit. Now you can. MastermindMarketingLLC.com slash founders. That's HTTP colon slash slash MastermindMarketingLLC.com slash founders. And I told you at the beginning, we've got bonuses. Bonus one. Founders only pricing breaks on Gearbubble top selling items. There's items that we, like I said before, are closer to the production line and I can get you killer, killer deals. But they're only for 60 days because some of them we actually lose money on. But it's part of a promotion. For founders that are paying the $9.97 a year to get into this account, we will give you necklaces for $3 off. You get necklaces, handmade necklaces, not something that scales very easy like screen print. Handmade necklaces for $4.95. Not $7.95 likes on the platform that we've already sold hundreds of thousands on that sellers are destroying it with. You get it even lower. $4 and, and wow, $3 off. $4.95. Mugs, same thing. $3 off. $4.95. You cannot get mugs anywhere else on the planet for that price on demand. It does not exist. Period. You can sell mugs at $14.95, still make $10 bucks a sale. You can sell necklaces all day. Don't go beneath $19.95, I showed you before, all day. You'll be making $15. Bucks. That's insane margins for something that's under $20. And that's flat rate. That's on one, single one. So here's the full disclosure of how we drip everything out. And you can go to mastermindmarketingllc.com slash founders. We'll have an orientation call on August 10th, and I will give you your, uh, manually give you account access. We have to go and change the fees so that you get founder's fees. There isn't even a founder's account that allows you to get this type of fee at 997 a year. The tech, we have to manually go in and change your fees because that's how good of a deal this is. So it takes a few days to put you in there. And then you'll have an orientation call, I think it's 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. with me on August 10th. I'll go through the gear bubble on demand platform. I'll go through the dropship platform. I'll stay on there for an hour or two, whatever you need. I'll answer all your questions so that you can be up and running with mugs and necklaces and killing it because you get those price breaks. All right, August 17th, I'll do another live call about mugs, necklaces, and bracelets, and then we'll give you bracelet access. We're tiering that access mainly because if there is any bugs or anything like that, when it comes to scaling a bunch of users in, I can find them over like the first two weeks and we can get them all taken care of. And then we'll give you t-shirts, hoodies. We'll give you the access to the full marketplace of all the different providers so that you can get used to all those different things. Start getting your Shopify stores up and going and these products going. And we can roll in the features in a way that allows us to make sure there is no bugs that get scaled up so you have the best service possible. September 7th, the dropship marketplace access. You'll get access to ability to send in stuff from China to our actual warehousing facility. Okay, so this is usually a 997 setup fee just to get that done. We're waiving all that stuff for you. So you get dropship, marketplace access, and it's very simple. SKU number on one side, SKU number on the other, and then there's a unique identifier, a UID, real bad word, I know it. There's a UID, basically if I'm provider 304, you'll click, you'll type in provider 304, and it will bring up a catalog of all the SKUs that are in their warehouse. And then when you import your CSV of orders, just match up the SKUs, and boom, it works like magic. It's just a link in the middle for you so that you can organize everything. So you'll get dropship marketplace access so you can do necklaces, tripwires, whatever you want. Sky's the limit and we'll handle all the fulfillment problems for you. September 14th, customized letters, bracelets, and necklaces. And what this is, if it's a necklace or a bracelet, we are actually have the ability to put Donald or Wilson 
or any of these things on the necklaces, and you can charge per letter and do that on your Shopify fee. You can take a Pitbull necklace and then customize it with the name of their dog for the upsell. This doesn't exist anywhere else, and the only reason we can do this is because we own the production facilities for necklace and bracelets, and we know that when you can customize things with a charm or the birthstone or a name, those will destroy it on Shopify. So if you want that ability, this is the only place in the world to get it. Week 7, Shopify app. The reason why I stick it all the way back at week 7 is because we have to tweak a few more things and they have to approve it. It takes 3 to 4 weeks to approve it and if there's any tweaks that they want us to make, we still have to have like another 1 or 2 weeks for that to be done. So about week 7, we should be good on that. I don't want to guarantee that because that's not all up to me. If Shopify wants us to make extra tweaks, I, I don't have a choice. So that's a projected, okay, just so you know. Same thing with Amazon, they're projected ones. If I don't hit them, please don't hold it against me. But those are where I should have those completed. Most of that is a delay on an approval process, not a delay on us. Bonus two. All right, this is only for founding members. This will never, ever, ever be offered again. And that pricing that you got for necklaces and mugs, never going to be again. Instead of one store license, like you had to pay for monthly fees on Shopify, you get five. So if you got rottweilerlovers.com and pitbulllovers.com and germanshepherdlovers.com, you can do all those. Most likely you should probably just have one big dog store, but you get the point. If you have five different stores, instead of paying what would later be $9.97 a month five times, $5,000 a month, which I don't think that many people would sign up for, but that's a lot of money. That's $60,000 a year. I think people would most likely consolidate their store before they paid that, and then they would only pay $12,000 a year. But you don't have to do anything with your stores. You get five licenses, five, which later, like I said, is $9.97 a month per licenses. This is the only time that you'll ever be able to do this. Later when we go public, it'll be one, just like Shopify. So if you want to lock this in for a bunch of your stores, you need to get in on this founder deal. It will not happen again. There's a link most likely below this one since it's going to be a recording. You can Click it below, or you can go to mastermymarketingllc.com slash founders. Just, you can see the pricing up here. Um, it's $5,000 a month later when it's public. Okay, That's a lot. Like I said, most people would just consolidate their store before paying that, and they'd still be paying $12,000 a year, and they wouldn't get the necklace and the mug price breaks that you're going to be getting. This deal will never happen anywhere close to this again. So if you're interested in this, which you should be, if you sell any physical product ever or want to, you need to go to the link below or mastermindmarketingllc.com slash founders, get founders access. Hopefully I did a good demonstration for you. I hope that you join because this is absolutely life-changing. It's going to make many people um, completely change their life type money. So I hope to have you on board. Hope you enjoyed the call. Hope you learned something from looking inside of my ads and seeing some things. Go to mastermindmarketingllc.com slash founders or click the link on this page. And have a great day. I will see you inside of the marketplace.